the president's tweet was completely inappropriate. Obviously, I don't see that as an appropriate comment. Tweets like this are inconsistent with the greatness of the country and the office. This week, most of Washington spent its time discussing the dignity of the Oval Office and whether or not Trump's actions, like picking a Twitter fight with cable TV hosts, met its standards. One man who has spent years mitigating undignified squabbles seemed to have the definitive answer, tweeting, I'm sorry, but Trump's behavior is not just beneath the dignity of the presidency, but that of any decent man. And joining me now is renowned talk show host Jerry Springer. Jerry, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Always good to talk to you. Well, thanks, Joy. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Let's first get your reaction to the latest Trump opus. Uh, this is his tweet of this morning uh, showing himself body slamming what he has, uh, they have superimposed is CNN back when he was a character on WWE. Uh, as somebody yeah. who has had more than a few TV fights on his show, what did you <laughs> make of that moment? Well, the point is what I would think any grown up's reaction would be. This, that's show business. It doesn't belong in the White House. I don't think Trump has any feeling about the dignity and the sacredness of where he is. This is the most powerful, most sacred job in America, the most powerful job in the world. When you're there, you don't behave like you're on a TV reality show. You don't behave like you're on WWE. I've been on WWE, but it would never dawn on me that, oh my gosh, this is how you behave in the White House. You could take any guests I've ever had on my show with all the craziness over 27 years. If they got an invitation to come to the White House, every one of them would probably say, whoa, and they'd look for their very best clothing, their very best suit, they put on their very best manners because they were going to see the president of yeah. the United States. We don't have that feeling anymore with Trump in there. It's like this is just a circus. But do you think that, you know, the sort of Jerry Springer guest or, you know, the guys who would come on and be willing to fight on television, is that, does, when you talk to people that were on your show, people who were guests on your show, do you sure. get the sense that they would look up to Donald Trump and say, you know, this is the kind of president I want. He's more like me, the way I'm willing to behave in public. I think if deep down, if you're not in a political argument, and you've just showed some of the clips of the other Republican senators, deep down, everyone kind of knows, no matter what's going on in their personal life, no matter what their behavior is like, whatever their dysfunctions are, they kind of know when you're president of the United States, you ought to behave better. Yeah. You ought to try to be some kind of a role model. You're representing the greatest nation on earth. Behave yourself. They would understand that. I'm telling you, even the people on my show, mm -hmm. when the show is over, they're very well mannered. They say, hey, Jerry, uh, could I have some pictures? Would you hold my kid while we're taking a picture? What's a good restaurant to go to around here? They behave. Yeah. They even call me Mr. Springer, for God's <laughs> sakes. You know, yeah. of course, if you're, if you're meeting the president of the United States, you have a respect for that. Why can't Trump have that respect? Well, you know, I mean, and I think the big debate, and I have, I've, I feel like I'm having this debate every day with people that I talk to, of whether or not Donald Trump is a bug or a feature, um, whether or not he is the aberration, or maybe Barack Obama was sort of the last in a kind of era of presidents who comported themselves in a certain way. You know, whatever their personal lives, you go back to yeah. all the presidents who we now know were cheaters or, you know, sort of whatever vulgar in there, the way they spoke when you got the LBJ tapes. But in public, even Richard Nixon, in public, sort of comport sure. himself well. But Donald Trump tweeted um, yesterday something that I think is interesting. He tweeted yesterday, uh, my use of social media is not presidential. It's in all caps, modern day presidential, make America great again. Have we crossed a kind of Rubicon where maybe the sort of crass entertainment value of Trump is the new standard for what a lot of Americans think a president should be, not what you and I are talking about, this sort of dignified old standard? Well, he has uh, crossed the Rubicon, but I don't think the American people have. I mean, sure, Trump's got his supporters. I get that. But it's not a majority of the American people. 
And it's not even a majority of Republicans if you ask them about this behavior. No. Most Americans are able to compartmentalize. They know when they're watching crazy television. They know when they're watching professional wrestling. They know when they're watching a sporting event or when they're out with their friends on a Friday night in a bar. They know that that kind of behavior is totally different than what we should expect from the President of the United States of America. I don't believe for one second that most Americans believe that indecent behavior is appropriate in the White House. And yet, I though, just don't believe and that. And yet, Jerry, let me play you a little bit of Donald Trump's most absurd moment. And this is before 60 million people voted for him for president. Take a look. Yes. Okay, here's one. Just came out. Lock her up is right. No. You got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I had the, oh, maybe that's what I said. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and I wouldn't lose any voters. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. You know what that is, right? You know, Jerry, that sort of thing made a lot of uh, people who analyze politics believe that set aside, you know, sort of working class voters who may look at him as, you know, maybe what they'd want to aspire to be if they had yeah. $14 million their daddy left them or that they could win a, the lottery, um, but that you had a lot of suburban Republicans, a lot of white Republican women who looked at that, and a lot of analysts said there's no way that sort of people who are dressed and pressed would ever vote for somebody like that, and they did. So I wonder if maybe we're ascribing to the American public a kind of desire for dignity and a desire for, like, proper comportment that is only there for people that are in an ivory tower, that maybe it isn't there as broadly as we think. Well, I think a lot of people in the past election, and remember, not a majority of the people, three million more people voted for Hillary, sure. so let's re remember that. But anyway, a lot of people did vote for Trump, but a lot of people made a deal with the devil in a sense. They weren't supporting his behavior. They would say, even in interviews, no, that's not right. I don't want my kid growing up like that. That's no way to behave towards women, et cetera. But at least if he got elected, we'd have the person ele elected, uh, selected for the Supreme Court that we want. Or at least if we voted for him, uh, he would give us wealthy people a tax break. So people were willing to overlook that. Not that they approved of the behavior, but they were willing to overlook that because they would get the one thing that they really wanted out mm -hmm. of politics, which maybe was a lower tax or the right Supreme Court appointment or whatever. That is the deal they made. Now that people have seen the result of this and how we're mocked throughout the world and how all of a sudden maybe our security isn't as great as it should be, Maybe now people will say, you know what, that's the last time I'm ever going to make a deal with the devil on this case. No, I'm not going to support that man again. Well, we shall see. Uh, Jerry Springer, thank you very I much. <laughs> we shall see. Thanks thank you so me. much. Appreciate it. Okay. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.